Here we have a 2D simulation with a cylindrical structure which acts as a cavity. This cavity supports whispering gallery modes which have strong fields around the outer edge of the cylinder. The mode that we want to excite in the simulation is the whispering gallery mode at a wavelength of 418 nanometers. Add a dipole source from the sources drop down menu. You can click and drag the position of the source to place it near the edge of the structure where it could couple light into the desired mode. It's also possible to edit the source and type in the source position manually. Open the edit window for the source by clicking on the edit button or using the E keyboard shortcut. In the general tab, you can set the dipole type to electric or magnetic, and you can set the dipole orientation by specifying the theta and phi angles. Either type of dipole, electric or magnetic, will work to excite the mode of this cavity. In this case, I happen to know that the mode that I want to excite will have magnetic fields in the Z direction, so I'll select the magnetic dipole and set angle theta and angle phi to zero. Click OK and check the orientation of the dipole in the CAD viewports. The direction of the green arrow shows that the dipole is oriented along the Z direction. Edit the source again and under the Frequency Wavelength tab, set the wavelength to 418 nanometers to match the expected resonance wavelength. To ensure that light will couple into the desired mode, you can add additional dipoles at different locations. Select the dipole and use the duplicate button on the edit toolbar to create copies of the dipole and drag the duplicated dipoles to different positions around the edge of the structure. Now run the simulation. And after running, right-click on the profile monitor and visualize the H result to see the magnetic field profile of the resonant mode. Here are some tips for setting up the dipole source. Avoid placing the dipole source right next to block boundaries. A distance of at least one mesh cell should be used between the source injection region and block boundaries to avoid source injection errors. As mentioned in the previous unit, if you want to simulate uniform isotropic radiation from a point source rather than dipole radiation, this can be done by running three simulations using three orthogonal dipole orientations, then averaging the fields from the three simulations. Since the actual power emitted by the dipole is modified by surrounding structures, you can renormalize the power transmission results by multiplying the transmission by the Purcell factor. You can get the Purcell factor as a result from the source or measure it using the transmission box analysis group.